resign, retire early when my granddaughter came and I do help run her around to all the typical fun things that little girls get to do, dance and gymnastics. But I wanted to stay involved. And um, so this is what I thought I could do to give back into the district um, that employed me for so many years that I just absolutely love going to work every day. Thank you. Mr. Cortina. Um, well, I have no formal experience <coughs> in terms of school experience, public school experience. Um, I am the product of public schools. My family is the product of public schools. Um, I grew up, as I said, with two public school teachers uh, and professors. And um, Lisa and I have advocated, as I said, we have three children who have gone through love. We have children uh, who were both gifted and in special needs. We have advocated for our own children for opportunities, for high expectations, for high achievement um, for 14 years now. Um, and I believe that that experience and through my children also have, we have been involved in almost every program within Loveland. Um, so our experiences as parents and in pushing for, again, high expectations and achievement for, for our children. And I believe that that gives me a good perspective on what I would do as a board member, pushing for those same things for all students, not just for my own children. Um, so that's really why I decided to run. Uh, Lisa would tell you that I'm running instead of her because I filled out my petition sooner. But um, we, uh, we both feel very strongly about advocating for children in the district. And uh, that's why I'm running. Thank you. Uh, the next submitted question. Um, Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. The next the submitted question is, we have heard quite a bit about Destination Loveland. What is your vision for Loveland schools? I think it could also, you could also include, um, if you wish, uh, what are the opportunities and challenges for Loveland schools uh, coming up, and specifically um, in the next year as uh, you start uh, uh, as you start as you would start uh, your role as a board member, and I uh, will um, start with you, Ms. Pettit. Um, I, I think that as a board, we need to uh, work with the superintendent and secure a five-year plan for the district. Uh, we have to take into account all the new buildings, new housing that's being built. It seems to be every time a piece of property sells, we have 10 more acres to put a whole neighborhood in. Um, so we need to take into account of that um, and look at our buildings and really figure out where we want these kiddos, where our, where our kiddos need to be, and where do we have room and what do we need to, to increase our room. Um, and then my number one goal, actually, though, is <laughs> continuing to align our academic process. So when the children start in kindergarten and first grade, what they're learning then is applying to their next year, which then applies to the next and next, so that it's not from this source and this source, that it's all more aligned um, together. And I think that will help us to improve our state report card. Um, I, I think a lot of districts need to, to look at how to do this to improve our state report card. But that, that is what we have to work with. Um, thank you, the state of Ohio. But um, so we need to to uh, curtail our academic program to move forward with that. And that does, the, the state court report card does involve educating every student from special needs to gifted um, and everything and anything in between. So we need to continue working on our alignment of, it, of our academics. Thank you. Mr. Fortune. Um, <clears throat> I have a few, I think, major that I would put goals, and I touched on a few of 
few of them before, I think that establishing a real culture of high expectations and an infrastructure of support for student success to get there, I think that that certainly ties into what is classified as destination Loveland. Um, I believe creating a real plan with, excuse me, with community involvement um, to drive the district actions and it's, you know, a unified plan focused with measurable goals uh, really is a, a key focus and goal that has to happen within the next uh, 12 months. And I think better communication and reporting of the district's activities uh, is very important and is a very important goal. Um, I hear a lot about uh, poor communication and I'm sure that there are people within the district that are frustrated about that because certainly there's a ton of Facebook notices and emails and Twitter feeds and everything, but um, certainly there's information, but I don't think that the community always feels that they're getting the communication that they need, and I think that we need a good communication plan, especially looking forward at the potential for um, a levy and bond issue in the future where we really have to communicate the plan of what we're doing and why those really are important things. Um, to get that moving. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Washburn. Uh, similar to what the other candidates said, I think that we really do need to work on improving the communication with the community and rebuilding some of the trust that's been lost based on the current report card scores. And I think just touching on the report card scores, we definitely do need to focus on academic improvement that is a great area for opportunity for growth. I think that we have some good programs in place, but from my canvassing and personal experiences, it seems that we do have a lot of opportunity to really help all of the in-between middle kids grow and achieve and have places where we can push them more and challenge them more through our curriculum, through teacher training, and different programs. So I think that's something that we definitely need to focus on in addition to vertical alignment and making sure that the grades are building on one another and that the curriculum is substantial enough that the students are showing growth and they're able to grow within the curriculum, within their school day. Um, other challenges that we face obviously would be finding a strong superintendent to represent us in a positive way and um, our growing community. Again, that goes back to communicating with the voters, with the community members, to make sure that they're involved and they feel included and they feel as if they're being heard. Thank you, Mrs. Washburn. Uh, the next submitted question is, um, uh, what would be your course of action to advocate for any students that could potentially be affected by DACA being rescinded. So, um, we are going to start with you, Mr. Fortune. Can you restate the question, please? Yes, it, it, <laughs> um, and of course, <clears throat> it's asking you as an individual, but you don't uh, act as an in individual, you act as a board, so, uh, this would be asking your opinion on what the board could do to advocate for students who are affected by deportation uh, if, if they are uh, have been brought into the United States as a child illegally. So what would be your ideas about what the board could do to uh, advocate for those students? that might be at risk of deportation? Um, thank you for the question. I will be quite honest, I don't know what the legal um, ramifications or the legal obligations are of uh, a school board dealing with, uh, with students in that case, but uh, certainly as uh, a human individual and in the power on a school board, I would, I would ask that the school board um, investigate with all of its powers what 
are the legal obligations or what are the, the legal avenues with uh, how they could help students um, who may be affected by DACA. Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm not sure what is available to do, uh, but certainly as with any question that students or parents would have. Uh, Yeah, we're cooking with gas. Yeah, we are.